Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover how effective intermittent fasting may be as a dieting strategy for fat loss. Before exploring how intermittent fasting may influence fat loss and body composition, we first need to understand some key principles of nutrition. This will help us determine exactly what effects intermittent fasting may have. The first and most important nutritional consideration for fat loss is energy balance. This is simply how much energy we consume versus the energy we expend. There are three states of energy balance we can be in at any given point in time. First is an energy surplus, which is when we consume more calories than we expend. A consistent energy surplus will result in weight gain over time. Second is energy maintenance, which is when we consume an equal number of calories to what we expend. This will result in weight maintenance over time. And lastly, we have an energy deficit, which is when we consume less calories than we expend. A consistent energy deficit will result in weight loss over time. For fat loss, we want to be in an energy deficit over time. This will relate back to intermittent fasting when we cover it later in this video. But for now, we just need to understand that an energy deficit is the most important aspect for achieving significant fat loss. The second relevant nutritional principle we will discuss is macronutrients. The three macronutrients are protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Essentially, macronutrients are what type of calories we consume. If total daily calories are the quantity of energy consumption, macronutrients can be thought of as the quality side of energy. So basically, total daily calorie intake will determine weight change over time, while macronutrients will have an influence on what this weight is composed of. In other words, macronutrients will influence how much muscle versus fat we gain or lose during different states of energy balance. So when we lose weight in a calorie deficit, we ideally want to lose as much fat as possible and minimize how much muscle we lose. Without going into too much detail, we essentially want to try and consume a minimum of around 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. This will help us maximize muscle growth or muscle retention during either a calorie deficit or a surplus. The remainder of calories will then need to be made up by fat and carbohydrate intake, which is less important to prescribe specific amounts. A general recommendation would be to ensure that you consume a minimum amount of fat per day for general health, which would be around 0.5 grams per kilogram per day. And we also want to consume a reasonable amount of carbohydrates to fuel exercise and training. A general recommendation here would be to consume around 50% of your total daily calories from carbohydrates. Although this could vary quite substantially between individuals based on physical activity levels. And the last nutrition principle relevant to intermittent fasting is nutrient timing. Nutrient timing refers to when we consume our meals throughout the day. This has two primary implications for those trying to improve body composition. First is meal timing and frequency. This refers to how many meals we consume per day and how evenly these meals are spread throughout the day. Second is macronutrient timing and frequency. This refers to how our protein, carbohydrate and fat intake is distributed throughout the day and its timing relative to our workout. Nutrient timing doesn't seem to play a primary role in body composition changes, although it can have a small effect. It is generally recommended that trainees should consume around 3 to 6 evenly distributed meals per day, with total daily protein intake dispersed roughly evenly across each meal. However, when total daily calorie intake and macronutrient intake are matched, nutrient timing probably doesn't make much of a difference in body composition outcomes. So now that we have covered the fundamental principles of nutrition for body composition, let's now explore what intermittent fasting is. Intermittent fasting doesn't have a very specific definition, it can generally be described as limiting your feeding schedule to a restricted time window during the day. This can be a longer or shorter window depending on your specific preference. So essentially, this requires us to not eat or fast for an extended period of time, and then consume all our total daily calories in a short period of time. For example, we may only eat between the hours of 2 to 6 p.m., giving us a 4-hour feeding window and a 20-hour fasting period. However, if we think about this logically, we naturally have a time-restricted feeding window anyway. Let's say we eat our first meal of the day at 9 a.m. and our last meal at 7 p.m. That is a 10-hour feeding window and a 14-hour fasting period. 
So intermittent fasting is basically when we intentionally restrict our feeding window to a shorter time frame, which we normally wouldn't do. So what effects does intermittent fasting have on body composition? Let's look at what the research has found about the effects of intermittent fasting on body composition. First, let's look at this study, which compared the effects of intermittent fasting with a normal feeding window on body composition outcomes during a resistance training program. Subjects performed a resistance training protocol three times per week for eight weeks while eating at roughly maintenance calories. The normal feeding group consumed three meals per day at 8 a.m., 1 p.m. and 8 p.m., providing a 12-hour feeding window and a 12-hour fasting period. The intermittent fasting group consumed their three meals at 1 p.m., 4 p.m. and 8 p.m., providing a seven-hour feeding window and a 17-hour fasting period. The study found that both groups achieved small increases in fat-free mass and reductions in body fat. The outcomes tended to be slightly more favorable for the intermittent fasting group, but the differences were nothing too drastic. The same general trend was seen for both groups. This study was helpful because it controlled for calorie intake and macronutrients and involved the subjects performing resistance training. So this shows us that when these nutritional principles are controlled for, whether we implement an intermittent fasting strategy or a regular feeding window, body composition outcomes will essentially be the same. So it seems that there is nothing inherently special or harmful about intermittent fasting, rather total daily calories and macronutrient intake seem to be what impacts body composition changes the most. So although intermittent fasting doesn't necessarily seem to be any different than a regular feeding strategy, it may indirectly influence body composition outcomes. Intermittent fasting may have some indirect effects on the nutritional principles we previously discussed, which we know do have an effect on body composition. Let's now cover what factors intermittent fasting may impact indirectly. First and most important is its effects on calorie consumption. It seems that when implementing an intermittent fasting strategy, we tend to naturally eat less calories throughout the day. For example, this study explored the effects of intermittent fasting on obese adults. Rather than controlling calories in this study, subjects were simply instructed to eat as they please under three different timing protocols. The first group were restricted to a four hour feeding window, only being able to eat between three and 7 p.m. Another group were restricted to a six hour feeding window, only being able to eat between one and 7 p.m. And the third group was a control group, where subjects had no dietary or meal timing restrictions. It was found that after eight weeks, both time-restricted feeding groups naturally reduced their energy intake by around 550 calories per day and lost around 3% of their body weight. This was achieved simply by restricting their feeding window without consciously thinking about calorie intake. This is also seen quite consistently in other studies using intermittent fasting protocols. When subjects implement a time-restricted feeding window, they tend to naturally decrease calorie intake without conscious effort to do so. This may be beneficial for weight loss and weight loss maintenance, since we know that a calorie deficit is crucial to achieving fat loss. So why is this the case? Why do we tend to eat less with a strict eating window compared with a regular feeding protocol? The reason for this may be due to its effects on hunger and satiety. This refers to our overall desire to eat and feeling of fullness throughout the day. If we are less hungry and more satiated throughout the day, we are likely to consume less food and fewer total calories during the day. This study explored the effects of intermittent fasting on various different appetite markers. All subjects ate at maintenance calories, consuming three meals per day. One group consumed a regular feeding schedule, eating between 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., providing a 12-hour feeding window, while another group ate all three meals between 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., providing a shorter feeding window of six hours. Although both groups ate at maintenance calories, there were differences in reported hunger and satiety levels. The intermittent fasting group reported slightly decreased hunger, desire to eat, and increased fullness compared with the regular feeding group. Although these differences were not all that substantial, they appeared to be fairly consistent for all reported outcomes. This study suggests that shortening our feeding window may be able to slightly increase perceived fullness and decrease overall hunger. Like we saw in the previous study, this could help us naturally decrease total daily calorie intake without consciously counting calories. This would indirectly help with weight loss or maintaining a leaner physique. Another potential indirect influence that intermittent fasting may have on body composition is its effects on protein distribution. 
Obviously, when we are restricted to eating within a limited time frame, our meal distribution and therefore our protein distribution is limited. It is commonly advocated that an even protein distribution throughout the day, and especially around resistance training, is important for muscle growth. This may have some truth behind it, although its impact is probably not as significant as we once thought. This meta-analysis analyzed evidence on the effects of protein timing on hypertrophy outcomes. It was found that when total daily protein intake was equated, the specific timing throughout the day and around workouts had a very small advantage for hypertrophy outcomes, but this was not considered significant. This could potentially be a slight limitation for the use of intermittent fasting. Since protein timing is limited, we can't evenly distribute intake throughout the day and it becomes more difficult to time it around our training sessions. If possible, it is probably best to time resistance training around or during the feeding window when implementing an intermittent fasting approach. This will ensure we have sufficient amino acid availability before and after our workout. This is ideal as we want to maximize muscle retention during a weight loss period so the majority of weight loss comes from fat mass. And the last consideration we should make is for lifting performance. More specifically, will intermittent fasting inhibit how much weight we can lift or how many reps we can perform in the gym? We know that the training stimulus is the most important factor for muscle growth or muscle retention. So if our training sessions are inhibited, it may result in a poorer hypertrophic stimulus, which could potentially inhibit muscle growth or decrease the likelihood of muscle retention during a calorie deficit. The primary concern for intermittent fasting and lifting performance is for carbohydrate timing around our training sessions. We know that carbohydrates are the primary fuel source required for high intensity exercise like resistance training. So even if total daily carbohydrate intake is equated, does the timing of intake relative to our workout influence lifting performance? This research review assessed the influence of carbohydrate intake and timing on lifting performance. The researchers concluded that consuming carbohydrates before a resistance training session appears to improve performance of high volume resistance training which is typical of hypertrophy style training sessions. This is because carbohydrate intake will increase blood glucose levels, which is a term used to describe carbohydrates when it is transported in the blood, before our session, which will provide readily available fuel to be used immediately in the training session. This could potentially be an issue with intermittent fasting. If we train in a fasted state, then lifting performance could potentially be inhibited slightly due to a lack of readily available glucose in the bloodstream. This may limit the hypertrophic stimulus, reducing our risk of muscle growth, and decreasing our likelihood of maximizing muscle retention. However, this issue should be entirely alleviated if we simply time our workouts around our feeding window. If we can consume a meal with a solid carbohydrate feeding sometime before our training sessions, then we should have sufficient blood glucose levels to maximize lifting performance. So to summarize, let's establish some practical recommendations. First, we should understand that intermittent fasting is not an inherently superior strategy for weight loss or improving body composition. When calorie and macronutrient intakes are equated, it probably doesn't have any significant influence on body composition changes. However, intermittent fasting may have some indirect influences which may be favorable or inhibitory for body composition changes in specific contexts. More specifically, restricting our feeding window seems to naturally result in a decreased total daily calorie intake compared with a larger feeding window. This may simply be due to providing fewer total opportunities to eat, or it could be a result of increased satiety and decreased hunger. However, intermittent fasting also presents some potential issues for the goal of muscle growth or muscle retention. It limits our ability to manipulate protein timing and carbohydrate intake, which could potentially inhibit our ability to grow or retain muscle mass during a calorie deficit. So is this something you should implement as a nutritional strategy to lose fat? Well, it is certainly not necessary, although some of the research around this topic provides useful strategies to help us manipulate calorie intake and maximize muscular adaptations. The first beneficial strategy for fat loss that we can gather from this research is to condense our feeding window. Whether this is achieved by using a strict intermittent fasting approach or just implementing it into any other nutritional protocol, it is likely to have positive effects. Condensing the feeding window seems to naturally result in a decrease in calorie intake and subsequently unintentional weight loss. 
This may be due to a decrease in hunger and greater satiety, resulting in decreased cravings and desire to eat high calorie foods. So if trainees are struggling to adhere to a calorie deficit for an extended period of time, it may be wise to condense our feeding window slightly. This could simply be achieved by eating our first meal of the day one to two hours later and eating our last meal of the day one to two hours earlier. And the other consideration is for nutrient timing. While this doesn't play a major role in body composition outcomes, trainees probably still want to try and get a feeding of protein and carbohydrate within a few hours before and after resistance training sessions. This is a particularly important consideration for intermittent fasting protocols since our nutrient timing constraints are limited compared with a regular feeding protocol. Essentially, trainees should simply be more aware of their nutrient timing when restricting their feeding window. It would be wise to try and train after you have consumed a decent serving of protein and carbohydrates to ensure training quality is high and muscular adaptations are maximized. This is probably the case for both intermittent fasting strategies and regular nutritional protocols. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.